I was sitting naked last night next to. <laughs> I, I I don't know why I'm constantly. I'm just constantly sitting around naked, and I discovered there was a ruler next to me. So I decided it was a good time to measure my fucking dick. No, you did not measure your dick. Yeah, I did. Oh my god. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter. That's my mother. And that's my son. We chat about sex on a weekly basis and all the things you typically don't talk about with a parent. We like to make the uncomfortable conversations comfortable. So strap in, strap on, (laughs) and get ready for the wild ride. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter. We are chatting about sex and all the things you typically don't talk about with a parent on a weekly basis. And today, we're doing something a little new. What are we doing? We're sitting outside. Oh, yes, we are. So if you hear any uh, ambient noise like dogs barking or uh, engines revving, this is because my mother lives in the, like, the fa- she basically lives in the Fast and the Furious. I do. Uh, it, it's because we had some COVID scares, and I'm trying not to contaminate my mother. Well, you basically had the COVID scares, and I'm not worried about it, but I, I appreciate it. You don't it. give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I care. And and Dale does not care either. But Dale, and by the way, Dale is our incredible, handsome, smart, sweet, clever, incredibly talented videographer and producer. And Dale, welcome to the show. <laughs> hello. <laughs> the tiniest hello again. It's unbelievable. All right. What I wanted to say was he's also a dog handler because he has a whole buddy during this whole thing because we put him down, he starts barking. That's right. All right. Let's get the show on the road. Last week, we discussed embarrassing sex moments. We played a TikTok, and then we heard from you guys what your most embarrassing sex moment was, and I thought I'd share some of these. Yeah, you little sneaky freaks. You wrote in, and we are going to send them out. You sneaky buns. Okay. Allison writes, not once, but twice now, I've called my husband mom Oh. during sex. Oh, my God. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty... That is outrageous i love it that is hilarious you know a lot of people don't like to be called poppy or daddy or a lot of people don't like that yeah but how about mom <laughs> mom if i were called mom during sex i would be very concerned well why, what would you say <laughs> this is odd this is that's a little bit strange okay next mom uh hillary said my most embarrassing moment was the first time having sex with my most recent ex, and it's been a long time before that, so as we started to get going, I started uncontrollably sobbing, and I have no idea why. Oh. You know, sex can be a very emotional I thing. I know, so why is that embarrassing? Yeah, it doesn't need to be embarrassing. Yeah. It, it, it's activating all parts of your body that you hold emotion in. Look at you as the expert there. I'm a fucking expert over here. April. Wait, s- can I ask you something? Uh, Has anybody sobbed when you had sex with them? No. <laughs> Unfortunately not. I've never sobbed either. So You've I guess never sobbed? Both of you, us. Has someone sobbed with you? No, no one's ever sobbed around me or with me. I've heard this is a common thing. I farted. Okay, so the next one was <laughs> April said farting. <laughs> it happens. Luckily, my guy is cool with it. I understand. Chris says, my most embarrassing moment was years ago when my son was old enough to walk. He climbed out of his crib and into my back while I was doing the nasty. Oh, my goodness. You think he means onto his back? Yeah, yeah. Not into his back. Her back, yeah. Oh, you think it's... Oh, that's it. Yeah. All right. Tony says, my partner farted while I was doing doggy style on her. Another fart. It's it's too hard to contain that. You got a lot of yeah. I it's just a lot asked, of gas and yeah. I just pressure. asked my Pilates instructor if anybody farted. She goes, luckily no. And I said, would you be upset? She said, yeah, especially if I was like my head was right near their ass. And I was thinking to myself, shit, I'm I you may gotta be, hold that shit I, in. I don't know. I, you can't with hold it in because you're pushing your stomach down. I know. Down. With your last Pilates instructor, I was farting nonstop. You were farting. Yeah, with that. Remember her. All right. Uh, Lisa says, when, you, when you're with someone a good while, there's plenty of time to be embarrassed. Uh, one time he was like on top and blew a big booger on me. That's repulsive. I've started my period during sex. I oh. have burped. He has farted. There's, it's a messy, messy sport. Yep. Uh, Rachel says, once I was hooking up with a FWB and he felt around for the butt plug that I'd put into myself earlier. He couldn't find it, which was alarming. (laughs) So we stopped, and I went to the bathroom and had to reach my fingers all the way into my ass to retrieve it. I guess I'm lucky this didn't end up at an emergency room. Uh, 
Oh, yes. Like our the last episode when we talked about all the things that people have stuck up their butts. I got to tell you something. Mm. If you remember correctly, I don't know if I ever told my virginity story on this podcast. I probably have like you, 10 times. Yep, that's correct. But I got a tampon stuck up me. Yeah, I remember that. Was, that was pretty embarrassing. It's nice that I know that about my mother. <laughs> now Dale does. Um, uh, I will say Stevie said... W- while squirting, I pooped while squirting and didn't notice and went from couch to bed and got more shit all over the place. Oh, my God. That, that is really embarrassing and disgusting. Well we got it? another. Erica says crying after sex, then trying to explain that I'm not crying due to their performance, but because my orgasm was so intense. Oh. That's interesting. That it's, a, it's a big release. Okay. And here's the final one I'll say. Okay. Alyssa said her most embarrassing moment was one time while camping on acid in living in Taiwan, I was extremely sexually frustrated at the time and lured a friend whom I was experiencing sexual tension with into my tent. He couldn't get hard and was clearly self-conscious about it, so he fingered me instead. That's when at some point I said, do you feel that? Referring to my clit. That's my lady boner. The moment it left my lips, I cringed and felt it ruin the mood almost instantly. We kind of laughed, but it wasn't the same vibe afterwards. Okay, that one I th- I think has a little something to do with the acid going on there. Yeah, you get very intense. Well, you get v- you get very in your head. With That's the what acid. I'm talking about. Yeah. So maybe you know. That's my lady boner. Well, it is. It is a lady boner. I don't know if that's the sexiest thing to say to someone though. It's the same erectile tissue. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this. Yeah, I knew that. Um, one time my boxer Severus snuck into the bedroom while my boyfriend and I were having sex. He hopped on the bed in the right corner and passed out. Right as my boyfriend was about to climax, Severus ripped a big fart. We still laugh about it till this day. <laughs> that was really from the Queen of Awkward. Is that embarrassing? It's not really that embarrassing. Yeah. All right. Th- th- I appreciate all your, your responses. And Thank I'm you very much. I'm sure there are way more. We got a lot more. Yeah. If you want to participate in this, give us a text at 310-356-3920. That's our text number. You can text us whatever the fuck you want. Don't make it, you know, don't be so fucking dirty. Like, oh, send me fucking dick pics and shit like that. Has anybody done that to us? No. <laughs> no one has. I mean, some people have so sent us dick pics, but not on the text line. Yeah. How do you text a dick pic? Yeah. I don't think we can send pictures, can we? I don't think so. All right. Moving right along. Moving right along. Would you like to tell me how was the wedding? The wedding was nice. But you know what I like about weddings? One of the things is getting dressed up, feeling all pretty. I don't. I know. You don't you get to do that very often. You don't get to do this often, and I think it's very underrated for men. You know, men say, oh, I got to wear this nice thing, but no one's really... Sinking into the experience and really getting dialed up. What did you wear? I'm afraid to ask. I wore a vintage shirt from the 70s with the longest fucking collar that you could imagine. Okay. My friend's green velvet jacket. I look like fucking Austin Powers. And then on top of that, my friend uh, curled my hair. Okay. Have you ever had your hair curled uh, by no, your friend? No. You've never had your hair curled? Oh, yeah, 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 I have. What's going with the listening? No, I'm saying I, d- I thought you meant like curled for an event by a friend. Yeah, I, w- that's what I happened. wouldn't trust my friends. I one one friend I would. F- I looked fucking hot. Oh, you look good. I saw a picture of you. I you looked did. hot. I think hot? I finally have a profile picture. Jesus Christ, it's honking. I finally have a profile picture for the hinge. I like that you're confident enough to say I looked hot. I looked hot, and you know what I think? What? I don't think I. I've come to the conclusion after putting the profile picture of on on Hinge and Bumble and Field, all of them. I don't think anyone uses those apps. What? I don't care how many times I swipe. There's no matches. I mean, so you get one match a you day. You think no one's on there? I don't think anyone's on there. I think they don't tell People you this. People are over it. Yeah. That's the answer. Oh, man. People that's, are over that's discouraging. No, I'm joking, Mom. It's oh. They're choosing not to fucking swipe right on me as well. Oh, I, I bought that hook, line, and sinker. I will say when shopping for this outfit... The, you know, specifically the shirt. I mean, uh, just out of curiosity, why did you buy like a normal outfit? Why did you buy some weird shit? It was a beach chic look. Oh, beach chic. Beach chic. I don't know what the fuck that meant. Didn't so I just I went I'm into a vintage shop and started looking. I'm guessing it didn't mean velvet. Not really. I looked out like an outsider. But <laughs> I did. So when I was looking in the vintage shops, I came across a beautiful salesperson. She's gorgeous. Not wearing a mask. And I don't know what comes over me, but... 
so, for some reason, when I'm so attracted to someone, I don't give a flying fuck if they're wearing a mask or not. She oh. could breathe the COVID directly into my fucking eyes. And then later be on, totally fine. what happens? Then I can't go indoors with my mother. That's then what happens. And all of a sudden, the guilt hits. The guilt hits. I'm mm. like, what was I was completely transfixed. I was, it was literally like a siren bringing me in with her beauty and then <laughs> killing me with the COVID. <laughs> Wait, so did you end up like getting near her or were you standing like six feet away from her? No, I was very close to her. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was very Damn. close. It was a bad move. All right. All right. It was a very bad move. It's not, a, it's not even the thing that you called me up and started complaining there about. There have been many COVID situations here. I think COVID doesn't exist anymore. You don't think COVID exists anymore? In people's minds. I think people are like, oh, I'm over it. COVID exists in my mind because I can't fucking sleep. I'm, I've got COVID fatigue nonstop. You got COVID fatigue. No, I'm the reason I say that, and, and I, I obviously don't mean it. As a matter of fact, I was up in the middle of the night thinking, how can I influence enough people to take the vaccine because no one's taking it, and that's why we're never going to get out of this situation. You little influencer. I was trying to influence because my TikTok was building. I'm like, why am I only talking about horny dudes? Why don't I talk about the important things like taking the goddamn vaccine? So why don't you? I'm going to. Oh, wow. I'm going to switch speak up on the channel. I, I realized I started looking at my old stuff. I realized I already did. <laughs> I said, T take the fucking vaccine. Yeah. But anyway, my point is I'm in my little private gym in my building where you're supposed to wear a mask. And I'm with my other friend of mine. We're both wearing masks. We have a Pilates instructor. She's wearing a mask. And there's a kid, yeah, there's a little 18 year old punk. He's sitting. On the machine, not working out, but looking at his phone. Oh, just looking at his phone, scrolling, scrolling and spreading he's COVID. He's probably just getting all these Tinder swipes that you wanted. God damn it. Taking away your Tinder swipes. What the swipe. fuck is going on? All right, I don't want to get All right, I won't we're not going it. back there again. But meanwhile... It's extremely disheartening. I spent hours swiping and nothing. Okay, can we get back to that? Yes, later? yes. Jesus, your eyes were so big just I now. I just get so frustrated with it. I think it is frustrating. How much time do I have to invest in this fucking app? Something is up with it's that. It's supposed to be designed to be deleted. I, at this point, I'm going to be funding the whole fucking app. Oh, my God. Okay, all right. I'm sorry about what's going on on your Tinder profiles. But it's it's maybe never Tinder either. What is it? Hinge, Bumble, Field. The trifecta of failure. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, let's go on. All right. You're in the gym. There's a I'm fucking 18-year-old punk ass shit. There's an 18-year-old punk sitting there on a, on a machine doing nothing but scrolling. And I say, I walk up to him very kindly and I say, uh, where's the mask? He goes, where's the mask? Yeah. He goes, mask? Uh, I'm, du I'm double vaccinated. I go, yeah, yeah, so am I and so are they, but we're still wearing masks. I don't believe in that. Y oh, you're, you're the condo commando. No, I'm not the condo commando. He just goes, I don't... He goes, I don't believe in that. I go, you don't believe in that? We believe in that. And guess what? The rules are that you wear a mask. Yeah, and fuck just, that. And just then, by the way, this kid had no respect. There was no respect going on there. I would never, when I was 18, talk to a, a something yeah, 50 fuck plus, that noise. 60 plus, whatever age I am. I don't even know anymore. A person like that. 90. 90 plus. I would never do that. So luckily there was a person at the front desk walking by and I said, uh, can you talk to this kid, please? Oh, you got the, the fucking real I, commandos I, involved. I, I let them deal with it because you know what? I don't like it. And the same fuck, it's that part of my French, and that same kid. Oh, you swear on this all the time. All right. The same little fucking punk with his little punky ass friends were in an elevator, not wearing masks again, and I was ready to have a heart attack. I it can't stand it. Do you take that elevator? How am I supposed to not take that elevator? I'm going to walk up. You, you're wearing a mask though. I'm wearing a mask, but yeah. that doesn't mean anything. Cause it's Don't get me started on the elevator. Right. Right. We're going to get into the elevator situation. Oh, I God. Anyway, so she took care of it, supposedly. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in it either. Should I talk about the That's fucking... That's what he said. I don't believe in that. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. Yeah. Guess what? It's science. It's science. Fucking believe it or get the fuck out. Yep. Yeah, yeah otherwise you're killing people. So, I had a situation... I had a situation. What was your situation? <sighs> well, first, let me just say. It involved the woman again. I think I need to go in chronological order. Okay. The wedding was phenomenal. Yay. Partially because all my friends from high school were there. And partially because I was on mushrooms. Uh, what? Yes. No. <laughs> you going to vomit? What was that? You're a... You being on mushrooms is I I I I don't even do mushrooms. It was a micro dose of mushrooms. It was a micro. Like was it really a like a regular mushroom? Yeah, like I mean, yeah, I felt like you, an edible I mushroom. felt very giddy. I, at one point, 
It, my it legs, hit you? my leg. Yeah, of course it hit me. My legs. I said my legs are laughing right now. You f- that oh was some head. fucked up shit. Something you was going on. I love that line though. I my was legs laughing, laughing away. I could not stop laughing. Also, no. Uh, for the record, just for the record, no one else did the mushrooms. I was the only one doing the mushrooms. Why were you the? I only don't want to incriminate anyone. Okay, but well obviously the other people were doing. No this, one's doing the mushrooms. It was just like, me doing you're, mushrooms. You're not like a weird person that just goes <laughs> to shows weddings. Up to weddings and does mushrooms by himself. Oh, like, I got a good idea. I'm not gonna have a drink. I'm just gonna shoot, uh, eat some mushrooms. Like, shoot man, mushrooms? I don't know. Okay, how do you, you get thinking? them? How do you eat them? They're little chocolate bars. See, I delicious. Just, I, I, I did, that was not what it was like in my day. That when was I did gourmet. It. No, they used to make you like want to shit and vomit, and they were like the most did, nauseating at things. At one point, I did need to blow my nose, and I needed a friend to help me blow my nose. Oh my! I was like, you God. need to help me because I don't know what's about to happen when I use this tissue. It, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna blow. Was this friend like a doctor? No. Then what do you mean you had to someone had I to help you blow your help nose? Because I thought I was gonna snot How all over you, my face. You know what? How come you don't do the mushrooms with me? What? I always want to do something fun like that. You never, you never do that kind of stuff with this me. This is my first time you ever doing the mushrooms. You don't even have the, the mushrooms. This, one, like my this, one, this is actually the second or third time I've done like, mushrooms. I mean, you don't even like like to take a, a glass of wine when you're with me. But when you're with your friends, take you're doing a glass mushrooms. of wine. Drink a glass of wine. Drink a glass of wine. Oh, I don't like the substances so much. You do like the substances. Here's why. Your legs were laughing. Here's why. For the, even though I had a phenomenal experience on the mushrooms. On the mushrooms. I swear to God, I'm dealing with a 90 year old. The next on the mushrooms, two days. On the, which, on the pot. On the pot. You on, on the, the mushrooms. Uh, the next two days, I had Tuesday blues. This today, Tuesday blues. Oh, you were depressed. It gets, yeah, it get me da- gets me down. I'm feeling all right right now. but oh, And man. I felt pretty out of it. Pretty sleep deprived. I mean, how, it could be sleep much, deprivation too. How much? Yeah, I'm guessing it's that because how much? How much of the mushrooms did you eat? Just very tiny. Knowing you, you probably took like a like. It was a, a, a microdose. A microdose. It there was, was no like hallucinations. There was, was nothing. A, it was like a pin drop. No, it's a little piece of chocolate. I didn't get to eat chocolate. And my, one of my friends, when he did mushrooms, when he did the mushrooms, he was walking around. I'll never forget this. And he goes, "I can't shit it out. I can't piss it out. I can't <laughs> vomit it out. I can't puke it out. I can't. I, I can't get the shit out of me." That's what he said. Yeah, I did. I was having the time of my life. The little, a little amount goes a, a long way. How did you know that it wasn't going to be too much, and you're going to have like hallucinations over there? I, it was all dosed out. Dosed out. Yeah. Okay. It's very I, reliable. I it's am like in a state of shock. Why are you so shocked? I just can't believe you did mushrooms. Why, at a Dale? Wedding. Are you surprised I did mushrooms? I mean, no. I, they they do it like right a, now. Like a fun thing to do at a wedding. It's a very fun thing to do at a wedding. Wait, you, I would recommend all weddings wait, have, have mushrooms. Have you done the mushrooms? Uh, I've never done mushrooms, no. Oh, see? boy. You see, you're encouraging him to do mushrooms. I don't recommend this to anyone else. This is not medical advice. I just am sharing my own experience, which is actually in, in large quantities, I have not had a great experience on mushrooms. In very tiny micro qualities, very good experience. Now, I have heard that mushrooms are good for severely depressed people. So I think that maybe... I think that's when you're in... I, I, I could see that, but it's especially the case when you're in a therapeutic setting and it's designed for that purpose. Right. And you have someone helping you through that experience. You don't think a wedding was that experience? No, no. This is an abuse. This was this was a abuse of a sacred mushroom. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. You abused, this was not a sa- we you did abused not the mushroom? Abuse the mushroom. You little abuser. Yeah, and I paid for it the next following days. Maybe it was just that you hadn't gotten enough sleep because you're very you're no. Just it makes you, it keeps you up at night. Oh yeah. I sit up there. I was feeling good, but I was um, eyes wide open. I was I was up at four in the morning. You were up at four in the morning because mushrooms? No, something totally different. What? Buddy chewed. Uh, you know those little things that you clean your teeth with, little flossers with the little plastic. Oh yeah. He chewed the end off of it, and I I had this vision of. Having taken him to the emergency room because he poked his stomach or something, and oh I started researching God. online, oh and God. I started getting freaked out that he, that he was bleeding internally, and I thought I better go check on him. So I went to check on him, and then he started barking, and I had a terrible night's sleep. Oi! Anyway, I digress. Where were Is we? he all right? Uh, he's totally fine, and and he could probably chew much more plastic and not feel any effects. Oh my God! <laughs> all right. Well, can I? I would like to share a follow-up story to this experience. So because of the mushrooms. Can I just ask you, did what? you get laid? No. No. Oh, you, you kidding me? Did you meet any women when you no. were shrooming? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, it was, it was just me and my friends. But here, here's the deal. With the mushrooms, one of the things I realized was that, you know, you can you really get a different perspective on, on your, your life. And you can 
I'm having all these epiphanies on the fucking dance floor. What are you doing? Just You're sitting there dancing wedding. like a fucking fool, shining my light on people. Shining your light. Shining on my light. Whoa. It's a very generous thing to shine your light on someone. That's what I discovered. But also, I discovered this is a fucked up thing. I think this is more than a microdose. Maybe a microdose on normal people, but this micro. Is I, I I micro. What trust did you, me. How much? Like a, like a fingernail. It was actually half the dose that was recommended. I'm surprised you even took half the dose. Yeah. That's that's pretty good. Half the recommended dose. Okay, anyway. So you're shining your light so on I'm the shining the light, and I'm, I'm having epiphanies like, you know, how much do I actually need to push in life? How why, When can I just receive, you know? It's a nice thing. You don't realize. You're, you're consta- I'm constantly pushing. Yeah, you like to give. You're a I'm giver. No, I'm just kind of, sometimes for myself, I'm pushing to get attention, pushing to start a conversation, pushing, touch, pushing, pushing. Okay. I don't need to be pushing so much. Is this Cam's uppers? No. Oh. Why are you starting to get exhausted? <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered if this so is Cam's uppers. So let me tell you. So I started getting involved. So you I were sta- shining your light. I started. I started thinking to myself. I don't know. In the following days, I think I'm still uh, tripping or something. Are you tripping right now? I'm tripping. Let me see your eyes. Oh my God, they look demented. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've been thinking a lot. I don't know why this came to me, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to start going about the world. As opposed to thinking about an anxious, like something, the worst case scenario is going to happen. Start thinking something magical is about to happen. I like that. Go throughout your day thinking, oh my God, something, something, some crazy synchronicity, something magical is about to fucking happen. That is a great philosophy. That's fucking Cam's uppers right there. Oh, Cam's Cam's uppers is the place to be. Fun living is, is the life for me. me. It's Cam's Uppers. This is like one of the show where I get to share something near and dear to my heart that my mother typically finds boring. Or? In this case, funny. In- How about inspiring? Inspiring today? It's kind of inspiring. Shine your light, baby. Okay, so listen to this shit. So I'm starting, to, I'm, I'm, sitting in my, I'm sitting in my apartment, lonely as fuck. Is this before Fresh. or after the shrooms? After the shrooms. Two days later, I'm sitting in my apartment, I'm going... Something magical is about to happen when I come out that door. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, my neighbor ah. is going to be there. She's we don't need attractive? to get. We, she's a cute neighbor, but we're not doing anything. She, she's because we're living in the same place. So you don't want to fuck with that. We already you don't discussed. Shit where you eat. We don't want to shit with where you eat. So I was just thinking, something magical is about to happen. Yeah. I just know it. So th- and let it receive, receive the magic. Let something magical happen. Is she happen. single? I don't know. Does she like shrooms? She's, she's definitely single. It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to make anything happen. But the point is, I'm lonely as fuck. I'm sitting in there. I, anyone would have been delightful. So I, I'm sitting there. I leave my apartment. I'm like, something magic is about to happen. Lo and behold, who comes home? Her. The cute neighbor. Wow. The cute neighbor comes home with a dog. We start talking. What type I say, of dog? Why do we need to get into the d- details? Okay, sorry. Uh, you know I try to avoid these details, okay, and then you just fucking drill down. I was just thinking, the little dog, big dog, what type of d- dog? D- who the fuck gives a fuck what the dog okay, is? Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So we have to take. So I said, why don't we take the dog out? Good idea. So we go take the dog for a walk. I like it. Very smooth. We have smooth. a very nice experience. I think I'm still fucked up from the mushrooms or something. Two days later, because I literally got lost on my own street. Yes, something is not right. Something was completely... It Maybe kind you should of not do the, mu- the mushrooms anymore. It could have been sleep deprivation. No, people don't forget what their, their, their street is. So I'm walking down the street getting completely lost. Very disturbing, actually. Well, she was with you, guiding you. She I know. She I'm, I'm literally giving her directions, and she's like, what are you talking about? Our, our, our place is right there. Did you tell her you, did, you were on the shrooms? No, I think I was so out of it and sleep deprived. So we get. So then we get back into the building... And I can't find my fucking mask. It's locked somewhere in my jacket or somewhere. I don't know what the fuck it is. I wear, I'm in the elevator with her. You always have a mask on. I you always have a mask on. Double mask. It, uh, but because of the mushrooms or because of the fucking, I don't know what the fuck it was. You were I can't get. I cannot get the fucking mask out. Shit. And she's sniffling nonstop. What do you mean sniffling? <laughs> Sniffles. Sniffles? Sniffles. So she has a cold? And she works in, in a school system. This Aww. is what I need. I start researching, trying to, like, oh, okay. So uh, you're how thinking pr- how what? prevalent is COVID right now? And then it says LA, the, the USD, the, uh, not the one that she works in. Whatever. It's completely rampant with COVID right now. Okay. So let me ask you something. What? That's are why we're outside as- right now. Are you assuming, though, that she had COVID? Yeah, of course. Why are you assuming that? That's the magical thing that happened. She could have very well the have a cold. She could have a cold. 
the magic is you don't know. Something magical happened. I recommend asking yourself, saying, anytime you're just wondering about life or getting bored, something magical is about to happen. But and I, you'll I, find something magical to happen. I would think that magical is a good magic. You're thinking it's a downer, like she's got COVID and you're going to get it. I wasn't yeah. expecting that little detail of the magic. Okay. You never know these things. All right. I don't think she has COVID. Please, God, don't. Okay. All right. Anyway. So she wasn't wearing a mask. You weren't wearing a mask. And she's sniffling. And you thought you got COVID from her. In the elevator. In, in a 30-second elevator. Yeah. Okay. That's normal. That is normal. Are you going to be able to sleep at night? I already slept, and it wasn't good. Okay. Well, you can be up researching plastic in the, in the dog's intestine with me. That's Cam's uppers. That is awesome. I just read that guys who ejaculate 21 times a month have a much lower rate of prostate cancer, Cam. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can. Who would have thought, Cam, that jerking off your whole life could be your lifesaver? I d- had no clue. And if I knew, I would have started jerking off at a much younger age. <laughs> I don't have anything against porn, as you know, but I have a very special spot in my heart and mind and penis for webcam. And if you're going to look at webcam, Cam Soda is the way to go. It's like your own private strip club with thousands of women on Cam Soda. I love it. And you're and you're liking it? I think this is awesome. Yeah. You can you can really connect with live women from all over the world 24 hours a day and you not have found same same women go on at the same time every night and you start creating a community among you and all the other dudes that are jerking off to this woman. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. I never in a million years would have thought you'd like this. I'm uh, so happy for you. Absolutely love it. You want to see what the hype is all about? Go to camsoda.com slash sex talk to get $20 free with your first purchase. Works great from your phone, too. So if someone's at home, you can sneak into the bathroom and jerk off there. Go to camsoda.com slash sex talk to get your free $20 today. Mother, I had someone curl my hair this weekend. Oh, how nice. And I will tell you, I felt so confident when I had good looking hair. You can have good looking hair as well. You know how you do that? How? How do pros. you do that? I love Pros products. Pros makes the world's most personalized hair care. And what does wha- that mean, mother? What does that mean? It means it's sh- it's something I wish I had all my life because I've always had weird hair. You don't need to have weird hair anymore because you can get shampoo and conditioner and hair masks, leave-in conditioners, anything you possibly need for your hair. Designed specifically for you. Because you take a quiz. That's right. And I took the quiz, and I got beautiful products from Pros, and guess who used it? Who? My boyfriend. And you know what he said? Huh. His hair has never been shinier, softer, smoother, stronger. He loves it. And yeah, I'm, I'm very upset because I, he took it from me. By analyzing over 85 personal factors, Pros determines a unique blend of ingredients to treat your exact concerns. So if you're oily as hell like me... You don't need to worry about it anymore. They got your back. If you're not 100% positive, Pros is the best hair care you've had. They will take the products back, no questions asked. Incredible. Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash sneaky. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash sneaky for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. That's a deal. Are we ready for what I find to be the most fun part of the podcast? What is that, Mother? Mom's News. Mom's News. Mom's News. Mom's News is the segment of the show where my mother shares earth-shattering, groundbreaking, need-to-know info for your listening pleasure and edification. Today is a great day. Today is a great day. Yeah, a great Mom's News Day. What is it? Antwerp. This is in People magazine, by the way, which is pretty incredible. Finally, a reputable news source. Antwerp Zoo says woman who had an affair with a chimp asked to stay away for his health. <laughs> wait, wait. Yep. Wait. You heard it here. A woman who is having an affair with a chimpanzee at a Belgian zoo is, in fact, allowed to continue visiting the venue despite earlier reports. So there was like a whole... Sh- rigmarole going on she fucking is she fucking the chimpanzee well there is no ban to see cheetah we only asked to change her behavior towards a specific animal she ex- they explained that she had attempted to attract cheetah's attention for four years she's been visiting and interacting with the animal she deprived him of the bonding time he needs to have with his fellow primates 
she's she's really fucking fucking with his head. Oh, she's just going into the zoo and yes. just camping out there yes. talking to this yes. one chimp. Yes. What the fuck? He is an exception. He was raised with humans at home and came to the zoo almost 30 years ago. He's still fond of humans, but for his own health, he has to be part of the chimpanzee group as much <laughs> oh as possible. My gosh. And she should not dissuade him from that. What is she doing? Well, she, they had to ask her more than she once not to focus on Cheetah anymore, explaining to her that it's important for him to spend time with other chimps. We asked Mrs. Timmermans to let him be a chimpanzee among chimpanzees and not to stay with him for too long, nor to attract his attention. Why she doesn't she bond with the fellow humans? Listen to this. Why is she bonding with the chimpanzees? She's banned from the zoo because of the attention she paid Cheetah, blowing kisses and waving excessively while describing their interaction oh as an affair. God. She's blowing kisses at this poor chimpanzee. Who's describing it as an affair? Newsweek. Oh, okay. Timmerman said, I love that animal, and he loves me, and I haven't got anything else. Why do they want to take that away? Oh, my God. Speaking of animals, our animal is barking away over here. Also, she accused the zoo staff of being unfair, saying other dozens of visitors are allowed to make contact, then why not me? An animal that is too focused on people is less respected by its peers. We want China to be a chimpanzee as much as possible, said one of the spokespeople. It's terrible what's going on here. Did you just call China? The name I'm sorry, China. I didn't mean China. I meant Cheetah. <laughs> we want Cheetah to be a chimpanzee. And the, to that end, zookeepers are currently working toward helping Cheetah learn to interact with his fellow primates. So sorry, the affair, Mrs. Timmerman, has to end. Cut this shit out. What do you think about all this? I think it needs to end. Why is she going so hard in the fucking cheetah situation? <laughs> the chimpanzee <laughs> situation. Name Cheetah. <laughs> cheetah. It's very confusing it's too much that Cheetah this, is not a C cheetah. A. Yeah, it's too much. Cheetah. I mean, I'm thinking Cheetah. Yeah. We've had a, a lot of different relationships with animals so far. And this one I just fits the... the what do you mean we've had? You know that we've had relationships with, with everything from dolphins... Oh, you're saying in Mom's News yeah, you brought up. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, interacting with animals. Yeah. Yeah, I, I recommend uh, sticking with your own kind in this situation. Yeah, and chimps are chimps are social animals. You don't want to mess with their hierarchy. You don't want to fuck with that. No. And that was Mom's News. Thank you, Mom. Yeah, no problem. For the Mom's News. No, no worries. You brought something up recently that was quite interesting. Yeah, and I want to talk about that as well. Love languages. Yeah. There and are five love languages. Yeah, you want to tell them what that is? Words of affirmation. Yes. Quality Which, wh time. Well, why don't you tell them what that means? They're words where you affirm someone. Yes. Like when I tell my mother, Moot, you're a tremendous co-host of this podcast. That's very sweet. And I tell Dale, Dale, you have a beautiful run-of-the-mill penis. <laughs> well, that's nice, too. So sweet. <laughs> Have you ever seen Dale's penis? No. Then why are you assuming that? He told me it was one of the mill. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he can be like, you know, a lot of people have body dysmorphia. They don't really know if they, their penis is big or small based on the fact that he probably never seen other, uh, many other penises erect. Dale, do you think you have body dysmorphia when it comes to your penis? Hey, you know, I, I don't think so. I was sitting naked last night next to... <laughs> I, I, w I don't know why I'm constantly... I'm just constantly sitting around naked and I discovered there was a ruler next to me so i decided it was a good time to measure my fucking dick no you did not measure your dick yeah i did oh my god and what did you is it was, was it erect run of the mill was it erect started flaccid? flaccid and then i tried to make it erect to see what it was like you have way too much time on your hands I should not be i'm so should lonely not be, you should not I'm be just okay. sitting there naked measuring your naked dick. fucking swiping measuring my dick flaccid and this, this is not a good look and by the way my loneliness He's, He's killing, killing me. me. May I say one other thing? Don't do shrooms anymore. They cause you to do really weird things. I c completely agree. Okay. I cut cu cut me off. Cut me off. Okay. We got words of affirmation down. Oh God. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> now he's worried he's gonna get COVID. Well, what was I this? What was I you sneezed. Like, you're like whispering. No, you I didn't put up the whisper guard. I did not want to sneeze. What the in fuck your was face. that? I didn't want to sneeze right at you. you know, go. I could smell. I hate when you can smell someone else's sneeze. Okay, that's weird. I could smell the sneeze. You cannot smell a sneeze. Can you smell a sneeze? No. You know. <laughs> I've never smelled a sneeze. That's You've never smelled a sneeze? No. There's something. I, are you kidding me? No, I'm not I, kidding. I think yeah. I was going to bulge out of my shoulder just now when I, I was <laughs> I so think, excited. I think you're like, demented. Well, I you, could smell a sneeze a mile away. You have now lost all credibility. If someone's in the car with me, 
You, and they sneeze? You don't think I can smell that? No, that's insane. Are you kidding me? It's not like a candle. What I smelled it. How do you smell a sneeze? It's impossible. I have very, very sensitive olfactory glands. I think that they're also like, what is that called? The figment of your imagination. No fucking way. All right. What does it can smell like? <laughs> it smells like <laughs> snot. Oh, that explains Wait, can you, you can't smell your own sneeze? No. Are you guys fucking with me? No, we're not fucking with you. There is something wrong with Wait, you. Wait, what? You stop doing shrooms. I swear to God, my whole life I've been able to smell sneez- sneezes. Okay, there is something literally nuts. Uh, Haven't you noticed that I open the window when you sneeze in the car? Yeah, I thought you didn't want to get germs. That's, that's I don't like I smelling th- the sneeze. Okay, you also this don't like... This is crazy. So now I feel <laughs> much better about when you told me that you didn't like the smell of my breath because you're obviously making delusions. No way. Delusions. I have very, very sensitive olfactory glands. That came from your grandfather. He <laughs> also had very sensitive... I couldn't even wear perfume I around c- him. I can't believe that you... C- or anyway, let's move on. Words of affirmation. You're just like your grandfather. Yeah, okay. words of affirmation. I smell your sneeze. So, Mother, do you hear this sound? I hear the sound of like a waterfall. Does that turn you on? <laughs> that is what is turning me I on right now. I figure you're a Pisces. It is a soundscape from Dipsy. You know Dipsy. I love Dipsy. Dipsy is my fave. Our favorite app full of short, sexy stories designed to turn you on. Each Dipsy audio story features characters that feel like real people in immersive scenarios. So you feel like you're right there. Oh, yeah. Like right now, I'm in the middle of a waterfall. Oh, my God. Going to Bone Town, USA <laughs> with some beautiful merwoman. How do you like that? I, I guess it would just be a mermaid. Yeah, maybe you have, well, maybe it's plural. Maybe it's like multiple mermaids. It's a whole mer situation. Do you want to fuck L- a mermaid? I do, and you can listen to stories about hooking up with mermaids, your hometown crush you never made a move on, that coworker you always had a little thing for, that Kristen Walker on the yacht. All on Dipsy. They release new content every week, so there's always new t- something to explore. And like you said, they have wellness sessions, sensual bedtime stories, and soundscapes to help you relax. That's Before right. you drift off and masturbate. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash mom. Wow. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash mom. Incredible. Dipsystories.com slash mom. By the way, why are we talking about love languages? I thought you wanted to bring this up. Yeah, why did I? I don't know. <laughs> did someone tell you about their love language recently? Didn't Dee say something about his love language? I decided to look up love languages. That was it? Yeah. And yeah, uh, That's why you needed to bring this up? And then I asked Dee what, what his love language was, and he had no idea what any of them were. He just said gifts. So next thing you know, we're fucking doing a love language thing together. Yeah. All right. All right. So we took a quiz, but we'll get to that. But let's get to the fucking five love languages. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. This is developed by dear, by Dr. Gary Chapman, by the way. All right. The next one. We got words of affirmation. We got quality time. We got physical touch, acts of service, and receiving gifts. Right. And by the way, I think it's a little different if you're doing it with your son and a mother. Well, it also, is, it's different. Yeah, you're right. It is different among different relationships. Different relationships. You'll feel different types yeah. of love more potently than others and also i think it has to do with like if you're in a relationship or if you're not in a relationship i don't think that these love languages are necessarily consistent all the time with who you are because some you're pe- right do you know what i'm getting at no <laughs> okay I th- are you trying to say they change over time no i'm trying to say that like i was answering this based on my current relationship where i think if i wasn't in a relationship i may not answer the same questions the same way right yeah so this is just based specifically on the relationship I have with D's. Yeah. Okay, and you are basing it on a, a relationship you have with... Uh, I was going through these questions, and I was like, yeah. I don't even remember what it feels like to get touched. <laughs> How am I supposed ah. to compare that to, to receiving a gift from someone? I don't get that either. Oh. All right, so we took the five love languages quiz. Right. Which you can find yourself at fivelovelanguages.com. Thank you, Five Love Languages. And I might say uh. that when I, fr- when we, without reading uh, the book or taking the quiz, I just heard what those acts were, and I decided, oh, I must have. Yeah, what wor- do you think? I thought I was going to do words of affirmation. That's what I thought was going to be my love language. Oh, really? 
It's totally not my love language. I would think physical touch you find. Was, okay, let me just, I'll just go ahead and launch into it then. My number one, coming in at 33%, was acts of service. You like when people do shit for you. Apparently, I do. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's a, that makes a lot of sense. Why? You are constantly asking me to do some shit for you. <laughs> That's not why it is. No one is ever doing enough shit for you. Oh, that might be why I say that. It's it's currently in my relationship. I would like more acts of service. Okay. Uh, he doesn't even know I, I took this quiz. Anyway, then the next one is quality. I'm sure he will know soon. The next one is quality time at 27%. So I like having someone give me quality time when they look me in the eye when they're talking. They attention. Don't attention. They're, they're not watching TV constantly or, or on their phone or things like that. Then words of affirmation at 20%. Then receiving gifts, because I'm not really a materialistic person, but they said it, it could be little gifts, like even yeah, like yeah. a little letter or something. I love that shit. And then physical touch. I got a lot of physical touch, so I didn't really crave it. But if oh, I was if, what if I wasn't in a relationship? Then I might crave physical touch as number one, like you do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened? Well, l- let me see. So my results were physical touch, 27%. <laughs> <laughs> off the charts. <laughs> God damn it, they probably saw the results. They're like, oh, God, this guy's deprived of human contact. Someone touch him. I wonder if everybody took this now during COVID, if they all have the same thing. Well, so this was fascinating. I took this a long time ago. The same quiz I took in um, May 14th, 2020. Okay? So over a year ago. And my top one was acts of service, 33%. And my lowest one at 13% was physical touch. Isn't that crazy? That's really strange. That's exactly my the ones that I had in the same category. So at the time, I guess I was not that deprived of physical contact. Now, off the charts. Isn't, no. this, isn't this fascinating? It is fascinating, but I think at the time you were also deprived of physical touch. Probably not as much, though. Even hugs and shit? No, because that was the height of COVID when we weren't even hugging each other when we were in the same bubble. Yeah, but that wasn't that was maybe a month or two in. It wasn't fucking. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Two in, uh, year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next ones: words of affirmation was twenty percent, quality time was twenty percent, acts of service was twenty percent. Pretty kinda, even. You're even keel over there. I like it all. Uh, receiving gifts thirteen percent. I still like gifts though. So all right, I take I note. I I Excuse me, take note? Take note. I also am curious. Take note. Like, I never give you gifts. Which of these do you think that you do most often for other people? That's interesting. Um, wow. Physical it touch, I'd say you don't do too much of for other people. You, you very rarely touch other people. <laughs> During COVID, what am I going to do? Walk up and... By the no, way, no, I, I didn't th- really I like the fact that some guy was drunk at the party I was at Saturday night and kept grabbing and hugging me. And I'm like... It's COVID's going on. What Not are you doing? Good. Yeah. So but I, I think that I actually don't think that that is your your primary love language. No, my my primary love language I think is quality time. Yeah, I think that's right. But it didn't come up that way. No, Access no, the one that you provide for other people. I provide quality time for other people. You do words of affirmation as well. And words of affirmation. Those are my yeah. two top ones. I think when I give to other people. Yeah. I'm not big on the receiving gifts. Oh, receiving gifts. You mean giving gifts? Yeah. I, I'm not that great at giving gifts. You're very good at gifts. And what about acts of service? I'm not good at acts of service either. <laughs> so the wait, what your th- your th- your top ones were I'm acts of service and qu- quality time. Right. So the your top one acts of service is the one that you probably do the least right. for other people. Yeah. The love you give is equal to the love you. G- no, the love you, you take you can't is do equal everything. to it's the love you make. It has nothing to do with that, Cam. You c- you have to. It's it's not. E- it can't be evenly divided amongst there. Here's what I'll say. Yes. I I think we need more physical touch. Oh, here we go. All right. I, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about with the love languages? No, I, I just I, thought I, it the was whole thing I got me all fucking I, I fucked up now. I, wait, let me ask Dale. Dale? Dale, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, receiving gifts. Which one would you want to have a partner be proficient in? I think that uh, just based on you know how the past year has gone, I think that uh, I miss the physical touch the most. Oh, yeah. yeah. I bet you everyone does. Sneaky freaks. No, you don't. Excuse me, I'm in a relationship. Anyone who's not in a relationship, yeah, is going to say physical touch. So sneaky freaks, let us know at three one zero three five six three nine two zero. Let us know what your love language is in terms of what you prefer to receive and prefer to give. What mm. would you say is what you what you give the best? I think I'm pretty good at, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not good at gifting. 
Um, <laughs> I can yes. tell you that's my worst. Um, I'm terrible about gifts. But uh, I think I'm good at quality time. I think I'm pretty good at, like, I'm not usually on my phone if I'm with people, and I'm Aww. pretty good at staying present. That, that's a good one. Me quality too. Quality time Me is good. Too. Yeah, I like it. Anyway. Well, thank you for participating in that, Dale. Yes. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and all you sneaky freaks out there that are members of our Patreon page, it's patreon.com slash sex talk with my mom, you're invited to a sneaky freak Zoom party. Hello! Come join us for a Zoom party on September 8th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It is a very fun time where we all get together. Ma maybe you bring a drink, you bring something to smoke, you bring a pet. It's a very fun time. Bring some shrooms. You bring a little shroom, and we just hang out for an hour, and we shoot the shit. It's, it, it's lovely. It is way different than any other interaction we have with our uh, our audience, and our listener base. You get to connect with the other Sneaky Freaks. By the way, if you really want to connect with the Sneaky Freaks, also through <laughs> our Patreon page, you get access to our Discord channel, and there's an amazing discussion going on over there well, all the time. Why don't you tell them what Discord is? Because many, many people have no clue what it is, such as myself. It's a chat room. You can go yeah. and chat, and you know you can meet... You, I'm constantly popping in there and saying hello, and participating in the conversation. I'm doing it too. We're we're comparing, you know, stories, war stories from dating. It's How fun. fun! It is it's so fun. So you guys join Patreon.com/slash Sex Talk with My Mom. Join Patreon.com/slash Sex Talk with My Mom to get that Discord channel. And if you want to help us out, we'd really appreciate it if you leave us a rating and review on RateThisPodcast.com. Slash mom. That's it. You can uh, just even say fart and give, give us five stars, and we would be very grateful. So this one says, favorite pod. I wrote a beautiful review, and somehow Apple erased it. But suffice it to say, I love Cam and Karen, and I'm a great and I'm grateful they and this pod exist. Please give it a listen. It's life changing. Sally Salamander, one 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 five stars. Life changing. Is that a fucking sweet ass that review? A, yeah, I nothing I hate more than when I write something like a review like that and it gets deleted. And but you what about this review? Again. You like this review? I love it. Do I feel bad that they have erased it? The first, uh, the first one, which is probably lot much longer. Well, we very much appreciate it. Thank you very much, Sally Salamander, one 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 one. And thank you all for listening and for being a part of this journey. Yes, we really appreciate it. If you like this, please share it with a friend. It means the world to us. And also, check us out on YouTube. You can see us in the flesh, outside, amidst all the beautiful smoggy weather. And also, check us out on TikTok and, and Instagram, because <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it's popping off over this sex talk with my mom. It's true. We have some real fun videos, and uh, one of them actually is hilarious. What's going on over there? I'm going to just give you one that uh, was quite interesting. I'd like the Sneaky Freaks to respond to. Name me one thing non-sexual that'll turn you on. Oh, I love that. That's a great question. Isn't that a great question? Yeah. So name should we me, repeat it? Name me something that is non-sexual that turns you on. Right. This is going to be the question of the week for next week. I'll tell you that much. And what would you answer? You'll have to tune in next week to find out. Dale, you got an answer for us? I'm going to need a week to think about that. All right, you guys. We're going to need one week, and everybody's going to come back with their answers. All right. And let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and having fun with the chimpanzees. I, oh. The best, the best oh. one we've heard to date. Oh, I can't yes. believe it. Are you, you shocked yourself. I shocked myself. Wow. Thank you for listening. We love you all. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Bye. Bye. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com.